The Summoner Auto Rifle is finally back in Trials of Osiris, and with all the changes to PvP, I'm here to give you the easiest and most effective updated meta builds for Hunter, Warlock, and Titan. If you're a PvE player, no more wondering about the best aspects, fragments, weapons, or mods to run, this video is going to show you precisely what to run and how to run it all in 9 minutes or less. Let's get started. With the recent PvP updates, a lot has changed in terms of game modes and meta builds. You're going to be seeing a lot less people using special weapons, for example, and a lot more people using primary weapons. And one of the biggest changes to the sandbox for hunters was nerfing the infamous Strand Bow Hunter Threadling build, which turned every Crucible game into a cheap remake of Helldivers given how many bugs you were shooting down. So with that in mind, the question is, what rises to the top of the meta for Hunter? Firstly, if you're still in love with Strand Hunter, then don't worry, the class is still perfectly viable. It's just not obnoxiously broken as it was before. The big difference is that Threadlings are a lot easier to shut down now, and there's a cooldown between Threaded Spectre activations, meaning you can't just spam them back to back anymore. That being said, literally the entire kit is still the same, and most Strand Hunters that I know are just focusing their kit back towards the incredible movement abilities of Strand Hunter and the shutdown capabilities of ensnaring slam. Strand Hunter is still very much a meta choice. The double grapple allows you to get to zones and lanes faster than every other character in the game, while Ensnaring Slam is still an obnoxiously free shutdown ability with an extremely fast cooldown. So while you might not be able to play the bug necromancer role in the Crucible anymore, if you're a fast and aggressive player that prides themselves in disabling enemies, then dismantling them as they float helplessly 5 feet off the ground, then Strand Hunter is still an excellent choice. A good Strand Hunter is an absolute terror to play against and is the class of choice for many top tier players including Walla and Frostbolt. One of the best videos I did on my channel was about Strand Hunter and you can check it out over here. By the time you're done grappling all over the map like Spider-Man and dive bombing unsuspecting enemies, you won't miss Threadlings at all. Hang on, what's that? But Mr. Armageddon, I was never in love with Strand Hunter. I was in love with how broken it was. So stop yapping and just give me the most brain dead, easiest broken hunter build to use because every minute I spend in trials is a minute I can't spend with my wife and three kids. Well hold your horses there dad. Allow me to share what I believe is the secret meta build that nobody is currently using. What if I told you that I could give you a pulse rifle that can kill enemies faster than a sidearm? I mean, that would be absolutely nuts, right? Imagine deleting your enemies from 35 meters faster than they can blink. And more importantly, imagine doing this in a game mode where you don't have to worry so much about special weapons like snipers or shotguns. See, here's the thing. We're in a very long range pulse rifle meta, but people just haven't realized yet. And what people also haven't realized is that 390 pulse rifles when paired with Radiant can kill all opponents of all resilience levels in this sandbox in 0.6 seconds flat. That's right, every single gunfight you will have the TTK advantage against every single gun in the sandbox, sidearms, SMGs, hand cannons, it doesn't matter. Once we give your pulse rifle with a special source, it will outperform all of them. The irony is that I actually created the specific build to combat bow players last season, but now that Bungie have nerfed bows into oblivion, this build isn't just the anti-meta, I'd say it's damn near meta in general this season. Go check out my build video over here. I promise it's every bit as interesting as the thumbnail suggests. Just quickly settle a very important debate for me. Would you date a girl who does OF? Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll pick one person to carry to the lighthouse this week and enter them in the drawer to win this beautiful emblem. Don't forget also to drop a like and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more builds from me. As a small creator, it means the world to me, so thank you. Next up we have Warlocks and boy, might I say that Warlocks really got off light in this update. Whereas other classes suffered some fairly hefty nerfs, Warlocks just seem to avoid everything completely, once again invalidating my theory that someone in the PvP strike team literally hasn't swapped off Dawnblade since Shadowkeep. See, here's the thing about Solar Warlock. This subclass has been meta, or damn near meta, dominating everybody for close to four years straight. And for some reason, people just give it a pass. Can you imagine if Arc Titan or Solar Hunter was the dominant PvP meta for four years? People would be on the streets, kicking the door down to Bungie HQ. But if it's a Solar Warlock, no problem, just business as usual, right? Never forget that Solar Warlock was literally the only light subclass that was competitive against the dark days of Beyond Light Stasis. And to this day, it still remains 
Wolverine's the Warlock meta subclass of choice for top players in the game like ZK Mushroom and Gold Eagle. The reason is very simple. Solar Warlock can do literally everything. You want to play fast and aggressive? Slap on Icarus Dash for aggressive mobility and use Touch of Flame to heal yourself and just chain kill all of your enemies one after another. But maybe you're a longer range player who enjoys pulse rivals, scouts and snipers. Well then you equip Heat Rises and play long range off angles to obliterate your opponents before they even work out where you're floating. Solar Warlock is the most versatile subclass in the game and to make it even stronger, it not only has the best super for trials, namely Well of Radiance, the recent sandbox changes mean that the only supers you're likely to get are Well and Bubble, quite literally increasing the stock of Solar Warlock yet again. If you want to run what the sweatiest players in the world are running, then I encourage you to watch my Solar Warlock build video over here. Play any style you want and become water, my friend. Now I'm going to give you a build that might seem a little bit off the wall, but it is absurdly easy to use while giving excellent support to your teammates. Maybe you're not a super seasoned 3KD trial sweat. Maybe even getting a kill is a bit hard for you. In that case, what I want to do is give you a build that can help your team as much as possible. And as wild as this sounds, I think Ark Warlock with Getaway Artists might be the build for that. With the right ability management, you can make sure that you and your team are constantly supplied with Ark Souls. Now you may be thinking, Ark Souls? Yes. Remember that we are in a primary heavy meta right now. There are far less special weapons out in the wild, which means that a lot of engagements will come down to who can kill who faster with their primary weapon. Did you know that Arc Souls and the damage they do drastically reduce the TTK of many popular primaries? Imagine your team goes into every single engagement knowing with full confidence that you have the upper hand in time to kill. How valuable would that be when supporting a good player? Add the exotic auto rifle centrifuge, which synergizes perfectly with this build, and baby, you got a stew going. Go check out my Arclock build over here. I promise it's electrifying. Just quickly before we cover off the rest of the builds, are you struggling with PvP or going flawless in general? Join my Patreon and get amazing benefits like weekly trials cards with me, as well as crucible coaching sessions. You'll also get access to a private VIP community full of chill, cracked PvP players to also help you go flawless and achieve your PvP goals. If you're tired of struggling the crucible, go check out the link in the description below. And lastly, we have Titan. Now, if you play any trials at all, you may have noticed that Titans have been somewhat overrepresented at the high level. It's not uncommon to see three stacks of Void Titans just dominating most 3v3 modes. And that was predominantly because of the Overshield acting as a damage nerf to other people's weapons, effectively extending their TTK, thereby giving you the speed advantage. It was also the fact that Bubble is the fastest regenerating super in the entire game, whose entire purpose is to lock down an area in a zone capture mode like Trials of Osiris. All of this, of course, compounding with the fact that Titans have access to Peacekeepers, which buffs the already broken class of weapons known as SMGs. Now, of course, Bungie realized all of this and said to themselves, maybe, just maybe, people are sick and fucking tired of playing against the same Void Titan meta for the last two years, and we should nerf them much like we nerfed Threadling Hunter, right? Because that is precisely what Bungie did not do. Psych, Void Titan is still the most dominant class on Titan by a country mile. And whatever anyone is telling you about it being nerfed is just, as the kids these days say, mad cap. Yes, the cooldown on the Bastion Barricade increased marginally. And yes, it takes slightly longer to get a bubble than before. But here's the thing, neither of these changes are particularly noticeable. And now Bubble and Well are likely the only supers you'll see in Trials anyway. If you nerf Bubble, but then effectively take out all of the roaming supers and shut down supers, then in a way, you've indirectly buffed Bubble. So if you're the kind of person that enjoys missionary for 15 minutes once a month with your wife, I strongly recommend checking out my Void Titan build over here. It's boring, but it's powerful and it gets the job done. Lastly, if for some reason you don't like Bubble Titan, and let's be real, if you're looking to win in Trials of Osiris, that is what you should be running, then you do have some more fun alternatives. Strand Titan is excellent if you love to shut down players and value the movement, so is Arc Titan if you play a very aggressive playstyle and enjoy getting to people's faces constantly. But otherwise, my advice on Titan is very straightforward, just run Bubble and profit. Alright, if you enjoyed the video and you want to know what I personally run when I'm playing Trials, maybe check out my personal favorite build over here. Much love everybody and I'll see you all in the Crucible.